Hey y'all, how y'all doing? This is my review for Love and Marriage Huntsville, season five, episode 11, all right? So this episode opened up with Stormy preparing for her Canvas Beauty commercial. She asked Tiffany to be a model for the commercial, so Tiffany was there. Mel showed up as well, all right? So they all took a minute to, you know, sit down and talk. And of course, they started talking about that peace party that Stormy had because that was like the last place that they had saw each other. For some reason, Mel was kind of rude to Tiffany, you know? Um, it ain't the first time, though. It gives... I I really don't like you, but I tolerate you for the scenes that we got to shoot. And it could possibly have something to do with her knowing that Tiffany and her husband, Lou, are friends with Martel, okay? Still friends with him. But anyway, y'all, Mel started telling him about how Destiny invited her to her photo shoot. So she swung by. So, of course, Tiffany and Stormy wanted to hear about that. They thought that, you know, that was a step in the right direction for them. Tiffany asked her if she and Destiny were now friends, but Mel didn't answer her. She just looked at her and continued saying what she was saying. Maybe it was just the way that it was edited. I don't know. But anyway, Stormy and Tiffany, they appeared to be on board with Destiny and Mel linking up because they used to actually have a friendship and should be able to be cordial with each other. So the ladies feel OK. Tiffany was like, it's more than just being cordial when somebody invites you out. And Mel insisted that, you know, it was just her and Destiny agreeing to be cordial with one another. Then Mel got into the confessional saying how it was frustrating for her when people try to make it seem like you have to be friends with people that you cut off for a reason. She was saying that it was okay to walk away from friendships and let that be that. And that's true. So she then started talking about how she wanted the kids to have some kind of normalcy. So she continues to take them on vacations and stuff. But this time, post-divorce, she's invited Martel and his mom. Tiffany felt like, you know, that was a big deal as anybody would, because one moment they weren't even speaking to each other. And the next we saw that she and Martel was on vacation together back when, you know, their son Tank had went live with them at that beach house and that smoke detector had went off. So, you know, people was thinking that they had gotten back together until, you know, we saw Martel go crazy online. And that's when we put two and two together, which was that Neil invited him on that trip. And he saw that as a possibility of them getting back together. And when that didn't happen, he lost his shit. So she said that she had seen a difference in Martel over the past couple of weeks. And that isn't long enough for somebody to change. In my opinion, that's long enough for somebody to pretend that they've changed to get what they want. And I felt then and I still feel now that Mel only invited him on that trip so that he would have her back the day that she planned on confronting Wanda uh, at uh, Destiny's event. Because remember, she went to his house to talk to him about Wanda. OK. And in that same visit, she invited him on the trip. So with him knowing that he was invited on that trip, of course, he was going to do whatever Mel wanted him to do, in my opinion, because he didn't want to mess that up because he desperately wants his family back. And she knows that, in my opinion. So he was like a little lap dog. And the trip to Destin was his little treat. That's just how I see it. That's just how I saw it. OK. So Stormy wanted to know why Mel invited Martel and his mother on the trip. And Tiffany was like, because it's the best thing for the children. So Tiffany wouldn't let Mel answer. She answered for Mel. But Stormy asked again, Mel, you know, why did you invite them on a trip? And Tiffany was like, because she prioritizes her kids and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, girl, can Mel answer or no? So Mel then says that when you're really happy, um, don't nothing be bothering you. And she was talking about how she how she has this peace that surpasses all understanding and how she can be a bigger person because her and Martel have not been together for like two years. So she was saying that it was about growth and how she has seen growth in him and the petty stuff that he used to do because he was mad and bitter that she had left. Uh, I guess that subsided for a while until he didn't get what he wanted. And then she saw that the petty was still in him. So Stormy and Tiffany, you know, they were asking about the kids. Um, they just knew that the kids were happy and was probably like, oh, mom and dad going to get back together. But Mel said that, you know, her kids were really mature for their age and that she was going to have that conversation with them to let them know that that wasn't going to happen. And she was saying how she hoped that Martel wasn't going to receive his inch and take a mile by thinking that her invitation was something that it wasn't and start texting her and shit with pictures about how they used to be. So, you know, she said that she will see how it goes. And that was that with that scene, y'all. So next, we had the scene with Destiny and her cousin, Demi. 
a scene that I really could have done without. I guess it was just for film time and to let us know that her cousin has her makeup line and how she too was in the beauty industry. And I was like, since when, Destiny? When, since when have you been in the beauty industry? I heard that, you know, uh, you used to do corporate. I, well, I guess she was talking about her beauty supply store that's never open. I don't know. But anyway, um, I know that she used to be in corporate. Um, she said something about being in real estate and we all know that she's trying to sing and now beauty. It looks like she's following in the footsteps of Mel on purpose and everybody path, you know, it ain't yours. It's like figure out what the fuck you good at and go with that and change your attitude along the way. And I saw that little video that she posted with that, um, dance instructor teaching her something i forgot what it was called the merengue or some shit i don't know she was talking about how she was tired of people talking about her weight and that shit irritated me because i immediately thought about martel and other people who insides are so fucked up so they would rather work on their outside than their inside because i'm sure more people done talked about her nasty ass attitude more than they have her weight so why ain't she trying to change that why ain't she trying to change her attitude and people are only body shaming her because they don't like her, you know, and her status with male, in my opinion, telling her that she looks pregnant. They say everybody look pregnant as long as she knows that she's not. You know what I'm saying? But um, her having a fucked up attitude is true. So I feel like, you know, that's what she should be working on because it will have a detrimental effect on her success. But anyway, she said that her and her cousin were working on um, a few things. Okay. She said that they were going to be collaborating, okay? I heard a while ago about Destiny attempting to come out with lipstick. Don't know if it ever came out. But anyway, her cousin was talking about doing um, like a 90s theme something and inviting the other ladies out and asking if they would come. Destiny said that they would and how they were all um, in the same industry. And I was like, Destiny, just you can't just throw some shit together and declare that you're in that industry. But go on here, child. But anyway, Destiny's uh, cousin, Demi, started talking about how she knew Mel and Martel for a while, all right? She said that she did Mel's hair and makeup for her and Martel's wedding. She said that she went to school with Martel. And I was like, well, did you fuck them too? I wouldn't be surprised. She said that she had done Tiffany's makeup before as well. She said that she knew Kimmy too. And when it came to Tisha, she met her through a mutual friend. Huntsville must be a small place, okay? It must be the smallest place on the planet Earth because everybody know everybody. Destiny asked her um, how she felt about that peace party. And Demi told her that she liked the idea of it and how, you know, she wanted to know how everybody had felt. You know, everybody that was there because she was saying how they was probably feeling like Destiny was loud or, you know, being a bitch because they didn't understand how she rolled or did things. And I felt like it's not no it's nobody's job to understand Destiny and why she does the things that she does. If she comes off as a bitch to other people, then that's just what the fuck it is. She's the one who needs to understand why she acts like she acts and then go pay somebody to help her do something about it. Her and Martel need to hold hands and walk the therapy halls together. They do everything else together. Why can't they go and get therapy together? So Demi said, you know, what she found most interesting about that night, you know, of the peace party was how um, Mel said that they needed to normalize people just not dealing with each other. Because for her, she too feel that, you know, after dealing with bullshit for so long, you got to cut people off. And Destiny said that, you know, both she and Mel had agreed on that. <coughs> Excuse me. Destiny didn't have no choice, though. You know, I'm sure if she could, she would be friends with Mel again because it came with benefits. But anyway, she was telling her cousin about how she and Mel had talked at a photo shoot and, you know, uh, talked about everything that had taken place since they had fell out. And she feel like um, her and Mel are at a place where she can be amicable, you know, even though <clears throat> where they can be amicable, even though she'll never forget. That's what she said. And I'm sure the both of them won't forget. She won't forget how Mel just cut her off pretty much, in my opinion, because she was going to remain friends with Martel and how she blasted to the world that she gave her money to pay bills when her shit was about to get cut off. I get that Mel was trying to prove that she was a good friend since Destiny said that she wasn't, but she could have done that in another way, in my opinion. She didn't have to tell people that she had a shut off notice on her door. She knew that that was going to embarrass the fuck out of Destiny, in my opinion. And I felt like that was her goal because Destiny had embarrassed her when she was at the reunion. 
and said that she wasn't a good friend. <clears throat> I feel like Mel want people to see her as this perfect person that does no wrong. And if you say anything, especially on camera, to distort that image of her, then she going to come for you in a nasty way, in my opinion. So I'm sure that, you know, Destiny won't forget that. And Mel probably won't forget how she be telling Martel her business and probably did so during their friendship as well. I don't know. But anyway, y'all, her cousin was telling her that she felt like her and Mel was pretty much in the same position because she could tell that she was still, you know, that was still bothering her. <clears throat> but Destiny said that it really wasn't. But then in a confessional, she said that the space that she and Mel were in, it didn't feel good. But she had to find a way to move forward because every relationship has oppositions. And how you act in opposition determines how you're going to move forward. And she said that she couldn't deal with how Mel acted in an opposition, at least not on a level that they used to deal with each other on. So her cousin was like, I still feel that there's a part of you that gives a fuck. And Destiny said that she cares about Mel's well-being. And her cousin was like, so if Mel said, let's squash everything, I love you, blah, 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 um, you would be like, no. And Destiny said, nope. And I said, girl, bye. You know damn well you want to be friends with Mel. Yeah, she probably care about her, but she also knows that that friendship comes with benefits. And I feel like she, you know, she only saying that she wouldn't be with it because she feels like in her heart that Mel ain't going to say no such thing. You know what I'm saying? I think she knows that Mel ain't going to be friends with her no more, especially while she's friends with Martel and knows that she talks to him about her. Because you know whatever she tells Martel, Martel will use that shit against Mel, in my opinion. Maybe if Destiny knew how to be a friend to both without crossing boundaries. But um, I don't know if Destiny can do that. So in the next scene, y'all, Mel was at the house packing and getting the kids ready for their vacation. Her mom was there, too. Her mom was going to be joining them on a trip. And she was telling her mom how, you know, she had talked to um Martel's mom, Miss Marlene, and invited her as well. Mel said that, you know, she was excited for the kids to be in one place, meaning the kids with both their parents and their grandparents. And I want to say this because it relates to this. People always want to normalize shit, right? So for me, when it comes to normalizing shit, I want niggas to normalize sticking around and being a part of their children's lives and not just fucking this one and that one and creating several broken homes, not being present for either. When Mel mentioned that their grandparents were, the kids' grandparents were going to be on a trip, I was just thinking how her dad wasn't a part of her life and Martel's dad wasn't a part of his life. So the kids' grandparents only consisted of both their grandmothers and not their grandfathers. And it's like that for a lot of families. So I just wanted to say that I know you can't sit around and dwell about what isn't, but I was just thinking of how nice it would be for grandfathers to be a part of things too. But anyway, y'all, Van was packing the kids some snacks for the trip. Mel was telling her how she invited Martel's mom on the trip. Van hadn't spoken to Marlene in a while, so she wanted to know how that conversation went. And Mel said that it was interesting because Marlene had tried to call her lazy. And, you know, Mel said that she felt that, uh, it was out of order for her to say that, but felt like they both had said what they wanted to say. And she just let it be that because she knows she ain't lazy. And that's all that matters, I guess. Ain't no way a fuck boy's mama going to tell me I'm lazy and I'm sitting here making money to take care of him and our fucking kids. Lady bye. Tanga Ray bye. Because they had to have been what the fuck she was drinking when she said that shit. Van said that she felt the way about Marlene saying that as well. So she was hoping to have a conversation with her. And Van know damn well. <laughs> She didn't just want to talk to Marlene. She wanted to do the mashed potato on her damn head, in my opinion. <laughs> but anyway, Van was talking about how nice it would be for them to all get along for the sake of the kids in one space. <clears throat> then, you know, they showed Martel and his mama getting themselves together to go on the trip. And Marlene asked Martel if he was excited. And of course he was. He said that he was happy and excited. He said that, you know, they ain't went together, they ain't went nowhere together in a long time. So he was hoping that everything went well. In other words, he was hoping that he got back with Mel, in my opinion. Cause Marlene was like, right, because it's all about the kids. And Martel gonna say, Well, this is about me and Melody too, because we've been through a lot. And for me to say yes to go on this trip, we've been in a much better space. And Marlene was talking about how much fun they used to have going on trips. So both she and Martel was looking forward to it. And I was like, poor guy. Gave up everything for pussy and blowjobs. And then had the nerve to say that he always wanted the kids to have great experiences. And I was like, oh, really? Is it a great experience for them to be taken away from their mother? Because that's what you're trying to do. Was it a great experience for them when they had to move from their home into a new home? Because your ass couldn't stop cheating on their mama. 
So when did this desire for them to have great experiences come about? Then he started talking about how the guys felt like him going on a trip um, was giving the kids false hope. And as I mentioned in my previous video, when I first heard the clip, Martel wants his kids to have hope because he says that him nor Mel knows if they're going to get back together. Even though I doubt that happens, I know Ariane was somewhere salty as shit because after damn near 10 fucking years of fucking and sucking and pushing out a baby and being his ride or die, he still won't Mel. No matter how many bobs she go out and get and no matter how much she try to emulate Mel, he want the real thing, Okay. So moving on, y'all. Next, there was Kimmy and Maurice, and I believe that they were on their way home from her first treatment. She said that she has to go through 20 treatments, I believe, then radiation, and then she can ring that bell. And she was saying how the doctors had ran tests to make sure that the disease hadn't spread anywhere else in her body, and thank God it didn't. Then they did a test where, you know, they checked her genetics to see if she was predisposition hereditarily for breast cancer. And that test came back negative. So they were talking about the positives, which was that, you know, they caught it early and that the form that she has responds well to chemo. Maurice was saying how he wanted both of them to remain positive and was trying to figure out how to deal with it because he didn't know how he didn't know much because Kimmy was a medical professional in their relationship. So she understands the reality of it. For him, he was glad that they had started on their journey, you know, to getting rid of what she had because, you know, the waiting was something that he didn't like. Now, I skipped last week's review when she first found out that she had it. Um, I'm hoping for a full recovery for her. Um, Tisha was devastated as well when she found out. Kimmy and Maurice, you know, had went to that event, that period party that Tisha had for Mila. Um, I believe that's Tisha's oldest daughter's name. Um, maybe Kimmy decided to drop that bomb on Tisha at the event because she needed someone, you know, in that moment to comfort her. Um, and I feel like her and uh, Tisha are rather close. Tisha has a lot of friends, but Kimmy is probably like the closest since, you know, they spend a lot of time together and she's pretty much family. And speaking of Tisha's event, um, I know that happened last week, but I just wanted to say how I felt that it was a great idea to have a period party for her daughter. You know, um, at first I was like, y'all doing too much. But when you really think about it and see how, you know, um, information is presented to the young girls at the event, I felt like it was much needed, especially for those who have parents that aren't good at explaining shit to their kids and for those who have fathers raising them and they just don't know about that kind of stuff. Plus, you know, getting a period is life changing and could be scary for a young girl. You know, she will now be having painful cramps every month, you know, um, when they get their period, they can get pregnant, you know, um, then they'll be bleeding from a place where they don't normally bleed, bleed from. So I feel like it's best, um, for young girls to know what to expect so that, you know, they're prepared and not scared when it does happen to them. So anyway, y'all moving on. <clears throat> Mel and the kids were in the car getting ready to pull up to the beach house. And, um, she was asking them what their favorite memories of their vacation there in Florida were. Um, because, you know, they've been before. So Boss Baby's favorite memory was seeing her dad in some shorts. And I believe she said that they had flowers on them. Tank said that he, them eating together was one of his favorite memories. And for Mel, she said that it was the kids building um, sandcastles. So, you know, she was saying how she wanted to create more positive memories since towards the end of, you know, the marriage, the kids uh, experienced all the tension and stuff between her and Martell. So next, Kimmy pulled up to her house. She had just come from treatment. Her family was there waiting on her, Jalen, her mom, dad, and sisters, okay? So they had moved down there to Huntsville to where she was, okay? She was saying how she wanted to move her mom down there so she could take care of her mom and not the other way around, but I'm sure her mom didn't mind. She told them that, you know, she was just going to take it one day at a time, and she said that it was hard on Jalen when he first heard the news because, of course, he loves his mama. And uh, she said that they adore each other. You know, he asked his mama if um, him and Maurice were going to, you know, were to work out visitation hours, meaning were they going to switch up on going with her for a treatment? And she said that it would be helpful for him to switch up with Maurice when Maurice was tired or either had things to do. But she left that for the two of them to talk about. 
And, you know, she was talking about when she first got her diagnosis, she asked Maurice if he was scared and he said no, which was what she said she needed at the time because it was comforting. And she said she worries about Maurice because he's a fixer, but, you know, this is something that he can't fix. And she was asked, who all did she tell? And she told a few people, but, you know, it was a lot for her to keep repeating it over and over again. So Maurice said that he had took over that. And there were still a couple of people that they had to tell, like Mel and the rest of the cast. Kimmy said that, you know, it was tough, but the support that she's been receiving, um, she said that uh, she don't want for anything, which is great because I think that she's a good person. Um, she's optimistic about beating it. And um, she had one treatment, she uh, one treatment down, 19 more to go, I believe. So after she get done talking about that, she told them to feed her because I guess she was hungry. All right. So now we're going to move on to the next scene. Mel and the kids had arrived to the vacation spot, big white house on the beach in Destin, Florida. Um, they loved it, especially the kids. They had bunk beds and a game room and could walk right out to the beach. OK, Martel and his mama had pulled up next. Of course, the kids were excited to see them. I would say because they don't know no better, but they some smart kids who love their daddy in spite of all his flaws, I guess. That's all. Martel was in the confessionals talking about the reason for the trip was for the kids to have memories of their parents together and seeing them in a positive light. So Mel was discussing the plans that she had in place for, you know, um, the vacation with them. And she was telling them that she had a chef that was going to come in to cook for them for, you know, the next couple of days. Her mom was going to be coming in the next day and they were going to have family game night. It sounded like fun as long as Martel didn't fuck the shit up. So the food had come. Mel had ordered pizza and wings, but they had fucked up the order. And that's some shit I can't deal with. I'd be ready to set some shit off when I order one thing and they send me some other shit. I'd be like, you you got one job. If you can't do that, then why are you there? Ain't nobody got time for your fuck ups because a bitch hungry. And so are the kids. But anyway, Mel was trying to be hospitable by ordering Martel's favorite foods. He likes sausage and uh, pepperoni pizza and uh, lemon pepper wings and hot wings. And I got to ask, is that the fuck boy special or something? He ain't the only fuck boy I know that likes sausage and pepperoni pizza. I just had to throw that out there. So anyway, they fucked up the order and brought plain wings instead of what she asked for. And then gave her a separate sausage pizza and a separate pepperoni pizza instead of putting the shit on one pizza. I would have been hot. For real. But since it was for my tail, who cares? Eat it or starve. Anyway, I'll tell you who didn't care that the order was fucked up. Sugar mama. <laughs> she was ready to eat, just like her mama. <laughs> as soon as Mel put those pizza boxes down, she slid that damn wing in her mouth so fast. I was like, damn, Mel, you going to breathe and all? <laughs> that reminded me. That reminded me of when uh, me and a girlfriend from school had went to grab a uh, bite to eat. She went to the restroom um, and I took advantage of that. And I gulped down that motherfucking burger while she was gone. She came back out and I was like, bitch, I'm glad you wasn't out here. <laughs> That's what I did to that motherfucking burger. It had to have been illegal. I was hungry as shit. But anyway, Martel had brought uh, Mel her favorite snack as well. And I think it was that um, toffee flavored crunch and munch. And that name was very fitting for Mel because she damn sure liked the munch and crunch. I, w <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, though, if Martel hungry ass brought her half a box <laughs> and ate some of that shit on his way there with his trifling ass. Talking about somebody ate it for the children. No, nigga, that shit ain't <laughs> The children ain't had nothing to do with your ass eating their mama shit. But moving on, y'all. Martel said that he wasn't picky, so he didn't care that they had messed up the order. He was still ready to eat. And his mama probably was too. But I tell you one thing, had she started that smacking like she did when she and Mel went out to eat that day that she called Mel lazy, I would have slid her ass right onto the balcony because don't nobody want to hear that shit but the birds. So they prayed over the food and then Mel took Martel upstairs to show him, you know, the sleeping arrangements. He was like, we not sleeping in the same room, Mel. He was joking, but he know damn well he would have jumped at the chance. She was like, nigga, please, you wish, and proceeded to show him where his ashy ass was going to be sleeping and also beating his meat. It was like a three-story house, so the second floor had the bunk beds and another bedroom, so she and her mama was going to take that floor, and she told Martel that he and his mama could take the top floor. 
um, the bedrooms on the top floor. And he told her that he wanted to sleep on the floor with the kids. And she was like, well, it's not a big deal. We all in the same house. She was, you know, so he was like, okay. So, you know, it was like, it was typical of Martell to try to take a mile when his ass was only given an inch. That's what Mel said. She was in a confessional saying that, um, saying, can he just be happy that he and his mother were there and on a free trip? And the kids were right below him. So, again, no big deal. Some people thought that, you know, Mel was bragging, I guess, when she mentioned that he was on a free trip, which meant that she paid for everything. I don't know if I would say that she was bragging. I guess she was just saying that he shouldn't be complaining about shit and just enjoy the fact that she extended an invitation to him, which was a huge jump from not talking to him at all. I guess she, you know, she's used to him finding something to complain about when it comes to her, I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, she asked him how, you know, he felt about the trip so far. And, you know, he said good and that, you know, it felt like old times and I bet it did. Old times that he fucked up for pussy and blowjobs. Mel told him that, you know, she was glad that him and his mother came and that she just wanted everything to stay positive and something the kids could remember as being positive. And he was like, I don't see no reason why I shouldn't stay positive. And she was like, a lot of times you don't. A lot of times you don't see why things go the way that they do and they still go that way. Then he assured her that, you know, it was going to stay positive until she told his ass that they weren't getting back together, of course. So she put him, you know, out of her room. She said that he was flirting with her or whatever. Maybe that was edited out. I don't know. I doubt if anybody is shocked though. But um, she said that she it wasn't going to be none of that. So he took his ass on in the room with his mama, okay, and started talking to her. So Marlene had asked him how he, how he was feeling. And, you know, he said that he was feeling good. And he was telling her how the kids were, you know, so excited and happy. And so was his ass. He was probably more happier than they were. Because I doubt if, you know, he saw that invitation coming, being that the only communication that he had with Mel prior was um, email. And he acted like she wasn't even responding to him through there. You know a bitch ain't trying to fuck with your ass at all if she done reduced all communication to email only. No nigga, you can't call me, can't text me, can't beat me 911. And no, I'm not accepting pigeon posts. Nigga, email me so I can send your ass right over to the spam section. Child Martel couldn't even be, he couldn't even sit his ass in my spam. But yeah, y'all, he was in the room um, reminiscing with his mama about the good old days when he was married and they all went to Florida and was riding bikes and shit and was happy, you know, I guess, and whatnot. Um, the kids were over in the room with Mel and Tank was telling her how um, he noticed that her and Martel were getting along better at the house. And I forgot to mention how Boss Baby had noticed that Mel and Martel was wearing the same color, which was white. So they were very observant and was probably hoping that their parents were going to get back together like everybody was, was saying, you know. But um, Mel had talked to them and told him, you know, told Tank that, you know, they were only getting along for them because they, um, you know, they loved them and wanted to be able to take them places together like they used to do um, with everybody, including their grandmothers. But she told them that, you know, her and Martel were not getting back together. And, um, you know, it was probably disappointing for him and his siblings to hear you know what I'm saying? Um, but what can you do? Martel was still in the room talking to his mama, talking about, you know, he wouldn't uh, want to cause his children any more heartbreak. And I was like, says the person who is currently trying to take them away from their mother. Okay. I was like, get this nigga off my screen. He was like, the kids knew what divorce meant. And I was like, but you didn't. You wasn't ready for that shit at all. He was like, the kids know that, you know, him and Mel aren't together, but he wanted them to be hopeful because he don't know what's in store for him and Mel. And I was like, boy, bye. So, y'all, they showed a clip of next week's episode and they were having breakfast. And Martel tells Mel that Tisha and Marceau was going to be dropping by. And even though he said, keep that in mind, you can tell that Mel didn't know nothing about Tisha and Marceau dropping by because she was like, what? What time they supposed to be coming back? This nigga said in 45 minutes. So he sprung that shit on her ass. Fucking nut job. I was like, how the fuck you going to invite somebody to her vacation spot? I don't care if they were going to be there for a minute, an hour or what. And to drop it on her just 45 minutes before they were supposed to come. When he probably knew well beforehand 
Okay. And I'm thinking, okay, was Tisha and my soul already in Florida on a layover or something? Because they did go on a vacation a few months ago. I don't care what the situation was, though. He should have asked Mel first before he told Tisha and my soul that it was okay for them to stop by, especially when he knows that she ain't cool with them like that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he wanted to show off or something. I don't know what was going through Martel's head, but I'm confident in saying not much. Leave it to his ass to fuck up a good thing because that could have caused things to go left. And who knows? Maybe it did. I guess we'll have to wait and see to next week's episode. Talking about they'll be here in 45 minutes. I would have been like, oh, yeah, they'll be here in 45. Okay, okay. I like that number. That's how old sugar mom going to be when I invite your ass someplace else, you fucking bald head ass heathen. And y'all, that was that for that episode, okay? That was my review for Love and Marriage Huntsville. All right, y'all take care, and I'll chat with y'all in the next one.